Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another in our series of double shot interviews where we talk to CEOs and politicians and people of general interest. And this time I'm joined by Kerry McIntosh, who is the chairman of the New Zealand Venture Capital Association and also the New Zealand operating partner for Ironbridge, the Australian private equity fund that owns media works and enviro waste in New Zealand. Welcome to interest.co.nz, Kerry. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Look, um, it's been a, another interesting year, I guess, in the private equity and venture capital world. How's it all gone? Um, and um, how, how, many, how many deals have, have happened and, and what sort of size have they been? Look, if you, I, I think you know, private equity um, has, is definitely back uh, in the sense that I think we've seen uh, you know, a reasonable amount of uh, activity this year. Uh, I think um, you know, in the first half of this year we saw 100 million, 170 million invested, which has been the most since uh, 2007. And you know, I think we've seen um, you know, the market become much more active. There's a number of reasons for that. I think, uh, one, you know, the banking markets have opened up and uh, you know, leverage is available again to the private equity funds. Uh, I think you know, vendors have realised that you know, market conditions are what they are. They're not going to get any better. We've seen you know, better deal flow. And we've also seen, uh, you know, particularly in New Zealand and Australia, we've got uh, you know, a significant number of funds with... Um, large amounts of committed, yet un, you know, committed undrawn capital, and some of those funds are now getting towards the end of their investment period, uh, and so people are becoming quite active and looking for opportunities. And I think that's reflected in the level of activity both in New Zealand and in Australia. But I, I guess 170 million, as you say, that's that's the most uh, in the first half years since since 2007. Mm -hmm. so, um, I mean that's significant, but obviously it's a lot smaller than it was in those boom years in 2005 to 2007. So what sort of size deal on, on average has been has been happening? I think what we've actually seen, uh, you know, here in New Zealand in particular, has been um, you know mid market transactions, you know transactions. Uh, you know, undertaken largely by um, the New Zealand domiciled funds, uh, people like you know, Direct Capital and Maui. And you know, that tends to be quite a consistent um, you know, area of investment in this market. What we haven't seen is we haven't seen you know, the larger deals that were prevalent in 2006 and 2007, like, you know, for example, Yellow Pages. And you know, while we have seen you know, those deals resurrected in Australia, and HealthScope's a good example of that, uh, and obviously um, you know, KKR's recent Tilta Perpetual, which hasn't come off, but you know, some of those larger deals are, are back in Australia now, and I've got no doubt you know, that as time progresses, if the opportunities arise that are of the appropriate size, you know, we'll see private equity interested in those. So you think next year in, in New Zealand we might see some, some big sort of you know, several hundred million dollar deals again? Look, I think what we, um, what we are likely to see um, over the next um, couple of years is exits. I mean, if you look at um, you know, the bulk of um, you know, the larger transactions in New Zealand were done in 2006 and 2007, and I think a lot of the private equity firms will be looking for liquidity events you know, in the next two or three years. So you know, some of those assets um, you know, that the private equity are holding, um, assets, for example, like Teagle, uh, you know, Independent Liquor, uh, you know, there's a whole range of assets, I think, which will, will gradually come to market. Yeah. And what are, the, what are the banks like at the moment in terms of uh, what sort of leverage are they offering? I mean, I know in the, in the, in the boom times in 06, 07, there were some deals being done with six to debt equivalent to six to seven times EBITDA. What sort of rates are, are on offer now? Well, I think I can say uh, yeah, in regard to the banks, uh, yeah, they're certainly expensive. Uh, I think you know, if we go back to the boom times, we might have been paying 2% up front you know, with a margin of you know, 2 to 3%. I think you know, the transactions that are being done now are sort of being done at sort of a 4% upfront fee uh, and a 4% margin. So yeah, that makes, um, uh, yeah, obviously you need a better return profile you know, to pay for those, uh, you know, those type of banking rates. And you know, in terms of volume, I think uh, yeah, the, banks, um, you know, the, the banks, I think, for a couple of years have existed on restructuring fees. Uh, but over the last sort of 12 months, you know, those strict restructurings have come to a close. That source of fee income has dried up, and the banks really have, um, you know, looked around for other sources of fee income. And you know, lo and behold, there are their old friends, private equity. So we have seen uh, a real thaw. There's a real sort of appetite for uh, leveraged deals again. But uh, the most we're looking at at the moment is sort of four to four and a half times, which is really the sort of transaction, the sort of debt levels that we were seeing, you know, back in the early part of um, of the decade. You know, sort of around. 2001, two, three, four, and five, pre the pre the credit boom. Is is this perhaps one of the lessons from from the global financial crisis that things did get overheated and and, and those sorts of six to seven times EBIT, uh, debt to EBITDA ratios were just just too high? Look, I think I think you know um, I everyone has to assess you know transactions you know in the context of the environment in which they are done. But certainly you know looking back. Um, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, you know those multiples um, you know were too high in, in general.
Hmm. And, and look, I mean, obviously with, uh, with um, Ironbridge, with your Ironbridge hat on uh, in, in New Zealand, you've, you've got uh, Media Works and, and Enviro Waste. Mm -hmm. um, you also had Qualcare, the, uh, the retirement village uh, business, but you sold out of that some time ago? That's right. We sold out in that uh, to Macquarie in uh, February 2008. So that was a very attractive transaction for us. I think the returns there are about four and a half times the money in sort of 18 months. And how are your, your colleagues over in, in Sydney, how are they looking at New Zealand these days? Are they, are they keen to, to look for more opportunities here? Are they, they sort of keen for you to, to ferret out further deals for them? Look, I think we are, um, uh, you know, we are an Australasian fund. We have an Australasian mandate. You know, New Zealand's an important part of that. You know, and we're always you know, sort of uh, looking for opportunities. I think one thing I'll say at the moment is that, uh, you know, uh, when you're sitting in Sydney, um, you know, generally, um, you know, the, the, the Australian businesses and the Australian operations of our businesses are performing better. They have a better economic environment than New Zealand. So, um, you know, if there's anything that's discounting against New Zealand at the moment, it's sort of the slower pace of the economic recovery in New Zealand compared to Australia. And obviously you, you mentioned that, that uh, exits is, is, is going to be one of the, the themes in the next couple of years. Teagle, um, which you mentioned, is, is already on the, on the block um, quite publicly. Um, obviously Enviro Waste and, and Media Works were bought in that period as well. Might, um, might Iron, Ironbridge look to, to exit either of those two in the next uh, year or two? I think you know, from those, from those uh, businesses we still see um, you know, plenty of value upside. And we still see a significant improvement in earnings in both those businesses. So, yeah, we certainly wouldn't be looking for a liquidity event on the near term in either of those businesses. I mean, certainly um, Enviro Waste, um, the, the results were out recently, and the, the revenue in EBITDA was growing quite nicely. But mm. I think there was still an overall negative equity position of about $13 million based on the debt that it's carrying. Mm. Um, the banking covenants and everything are, 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 uh, are under control, are they? With yeah, no, I, mean, I, think, I think when you look at the accounts, I mean, um, a lot of the times, you know, private equity choose to put the bulk of their equity and as shareholder loans. Uh, and if you actually treat those as equities, you know, in the way that we do that, I think you'll find the leverage levels are, are much lower. And you know, from our perspective, um, you know, Enviro Waste has been very successful in uh, reducing leverage levels over the past sort of 12 to 18 months. You know, we're very comfortable with that business and our, and our banking arrangements. And you've got, obviously, um, Kim Ellis um, chairing that business, the former managing director of, of Waste Management, mm -hmm. which is the, the biggest competitor. So having his uh, input must be quite useful. Look, yeah, uh, from our perspective, we always try and get um, you know, industry expertise involved um, you know, in our businesses. And you know, Kim is uh, you know, a great manager and uh, has a great track record on waste. And uh, you know, we're very pleased to have him uh, on the board of Enviro Waste. And uh, he has a lot of value for us. So. Yeah. And, and with MediaWorks, obviously um, you've got TV3, C4 and, and a whole stable of radio stations, Radio Live, The Rock, etc. Um, obviously that's really, um, that business really um, derives almost all its revenue from the, the, the advertising market where things have been very, uh, very, very tough in the last couple of years. How are, th how are things tracking there in terms of uh, advertising? How have they been? I think it's an August uh, year financial year company. How, how was that the last year to August and how are things looking now? Look, I think you know, the, the major issue facing um, you know, MediaWorks, as I think with all of the sort of um, media companies, is just you know, the trajectory of the recovery and the ad spend in New Zealand, which has been very plat, you know, flat compared to Australia. If you look at sort of, you know, for example, Metro, free to air TV in Sydney, you know, the uh, ad spend levels there are back to you know, 2007 levels and above, whereas you know, in New Zealand we're still uh, a way away from that. So uh, I think the challenge uh, for us all has been you know, ad spend and uh, you know, waiting for that market to recover. But uh, you know, within, that, you know, within that broader environment, MediaWorks has performed very well. And um, you know, for the August year, we were well ahead of our base case forecast. So we're very happy with uh, the way that business is performing, performing, given the difficult ad spend environment. OK, and, and how are things looking now as we, we move towards 2011 in terms of advertising outlook? Look, I think, um, uh, yeah, we saw uh, what we thought was a bit of recovery, um, you know, pre-1 October, but I think that turned out to be largely sort of a pull-through from the GST increase. And I think, you know, a lot of businesses have you know, really struggled in October and November, and we've seen that reflected in ad spend. And I guess, you know, we're hoping for a better 2011. I think, you know, certainly some of the signs, uh, you know, are pointing to a stronger 2011, and uh, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> and and uh, in terms of with, uh, with MediaWorks, um, obviously with a... With a big private equity leverage buyout, there's quite a lot of debt, 550 odd million. I think the last 
last year's annual accounts. I think it's largely Royal Bank of Scotland, ABN and, and Bank of Scotland, so now effectively the, the British taxpayer. How's the relationship with the banks there and, and the, the covenants? Uh, any, any worries of, of a breach? Well, I think if you, if you recall, we went through a pretty significant restructuring in MediaWorks, and so the debt levels there are now significantly lower as a result of that, um, more, more in the sort of high 300s. So, um, you know, as a part of that sort of restructuring, um, you know, we reset all the covenants, and uh, yeah, we're trading uh, yeah, well within those covenants at the moment. So yes, we're, we're sort of very comfortable. Okay, so there's no, there's no sort of immediate uh, um, concern in, in terms of the no. covenants or anything. So, so as far as Ironbridge feels, you, you, you're happy to sit with that business for another year or two yet? Yes, I think we, we think there's you know, good upside there, particularly from the recovery in the market, you know, and we, we'd like to capture that. Okay, well this is Kerry McIntosh, who's the chairman of the New Zealand Venture Capital Association and also the New Zealand operating partner for Ironbridge. Thanks for coming in, Kerry. Thank you, and Gareth. And I'm Gareth Vaughan from interest.co.nz with another double shot interview.